All right, guys, over the next few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to four parent functions. Now, what these parent functions are is they are the base function. They're the simplest functions that we'll work with. Now, there's four parent functions, four simple functions that we're going to be working with right now. Okay, the first one is what we call linear. Okay, and the easiest linear one that we can do is the simple equation y equals x. Okay, then we'll go ahead and we'll look at the next one, which will be the absolute value. Okay, and again, the easiest one that we can do is just y equals absolute value of x. And then we'll go ahead and we'll look at another one. We'll look at quadratic. And quadratic is just y equals x squared. And then our last one is we're going to look at exponential. And the simplest one we're going to look at is y equals 2 to the x. So notice that each of these four functions have fundamental differences, right? A linear equation just has x. Now you can multiply x by a number, you can add something on the end, but in the end it's just x. It doesn't have an exponent, nothing else is happening to it other than that multiplication, possibly division, just the simple operations. Absolute value is very similar to linear, except it has these bars on the outside. Okay? Again, you can multiply, divide, add, subtract, and it's still absolute value. Now, coming down to quadratic, notice that the x has a squared on it. We're not going to deal with any polynomials greater than that with our graphing, but just understand that you could also have different other types of functions as well. This one is quadratic, where y equals x squared. And the last one is exponential, where the x is actually the variable. Now, this 2 could be any series of numbers. It could be any number at all, really. But we're going to focus on a 2, and then we'll, we'll deal with situations where it's, it's a 2 for, for this year. All right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take each of these, and we're going to create a table, and we're going to find out what these graphs look like. And so for each of these, we're going to create a table with x and y. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put x values in. Now for all three of these, the values that we're going to put in will be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So note that if I put negative 2 in here for x, then I also get y equals negative 2. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. If I put negative 1 in for x, then y is equal to negative 1. If I put 0 in for x, y is 0, because y is equal to x. Now, if I put these points on my graph, I go to negative 2, negative 2, which is right there. I go to negative 1, negative 1, so negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, so 1, 1, and then 2, 2. So I've put the points on the graph, and you'll notice that the points create just a very nice straight line. Now, the whole purpose of the line here is to demonstrate all of the x values and y values that I didn't try. I didn't try negative one and a half. I didn't try one half. I didn't try one third. But those numbers would also result in points that would end up on this line. Okay, so there's your linear. It's a nice straight line. Let's consider absolute value. Now, you should have worked with absolute value before. Now, what absolute value is, is it's actually a distance from zero. So when we look at absolute value and we say, okay, I'm going to do y equals the absolute value of negative 2, the result is how far is negative 2 from 0? Well, if we look at a number line, and I go 0, negative 1, negative 2, right? Negative 2 is two spaces away from 0. So therefore, y will be 2. Now, if I put negative 1 in, that would be the absolute value of negative 1, which is the distance of negative 1 from 0, which is one space away. 0, of course, is no spaces away. If I go to 1, then a positive 1 is still a positive 1 space away. Because when we talk about distance, distance is always positive. 2, of course, will be two spaces away. So I go ahead and I put these on. I go to x equals negative 2, y equals 2. x equals negative 1 y equals 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And so there we've created our parent function of the absolute value, 
which if we connect the dots should look something like this and something like that. Okay, again, these are the simplest forms. We can change it around, which is what we'll be looking at over the next few days. But for now, this is the simplest form of the parent function. All right, note that there is a vertex. Okay, that's what this point is called. It's called a vertex where it bends and it goes back up. Okay, let's look at the quadratic function. So, Again, we're going to go with x and y. We're going to put the same numbers in. Notice that each time I'm trying to put the same numbers in for x so that we can see this relationship. So here I'm going to go y equals negative 2 squared. And of course, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 1 is negative 1 squared. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is so now I can put these points down. So negative 2 comma 4, so negative 2, 4. Negative 1, 1, so negative 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Now notice that this one is not a V like the absolute value was because it's not straight like this, right? You notice it starts to kind of bend. And so this one has to be a little bit more of a curve, okay? So please don't draw this as a V because it's not. This one is actually what we call a parabola, okay? The, the absolute value was V-shaped, and then the parabola is the quadratic, which is U-shaped. Okay. Now, in addition, this one also has a vertex, okay, which is our turning point. And again, you can multiply, add, subtract, which will change the position and the maybe how tall it is, whether it's stretched out, but it will still um, have this general shape of a U. All right. Let's look at the last one, which is exponential. So here we go, x and y. We're going to put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So if I put in negative 2, that would be 2 to the negative 2 power. And you may remember that that's the same thing. Since it's the negative exponent, we can rewrite it as 1 over 2 squared. And 2 squared, of course, is 4. So that's 1 over 4. So negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 power would be 1 fourth. And then we go negative 1, so we'll go 2 to the negative 1 power, which of course is 1 over 2 to the first power, which is 1 half. Okay? If we put 0, that would be 2 to the 0 power, and we know that anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power, of course, is 2. And 2 squared, of course, would be 4. So if we put these points down, we go to negative 2, one fourth, oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Negative two, one fourth, right there. Negative one, one half, so halfway in between. Zero, one, one, two, so one, two, right there, and two, four. Okay, so you can see that this one also has a curve similar to the quadratic, but this one doesn't come back up, right? If I put more and more negative numbers here, right? Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, right? Let's look at 2 to the negative fifth. That's going to be 1 over 2 to the fifth, right? Which is the same thing as 1 over 32. So that's going to be even smaller. So you can see I'm getting closer and closer to 0, but you know what? It's never actually going to get to 0. So that's what we call an asymptote. So right here at 0, we have what's called at y equals 0. That is what's called an asymptote. An asymptote is a line that you get closer and closer to without ever quite reaching it. No matter how low that x gets, how big that number, negative number gets, it's still going to be 1 divided by that. So it's going to get really, really close to 0, but won't ever quite get there. So then we'll just kind of fill in the dots. Of course, it's going to get steeper and steeper as we go this way. And so often kids call this an L shape. Of course, it's, it's actually a backwards L. Or you can call it a hockey stick shape. Okay. Now, don't get confused with the shape 
and the name of the function, right? Linear is a straight line. V-shape is not the name of a function. It's just what the graph looks like. This is an absolute value function. Quadratic is U-shaped. That describes the shape. And then the exponential has kind of this hockey stick or backwards L shape. Now, uh, keep in mind, an important feature here is the asymptote. There is no vertex because it never goes back up. And so it just has the asymptote there. All right, so these are the four parent functions that you need to be comfortable with. You should be able to replicate these four very, very quickly. In fact, it should take you less than a minute to put down the five points, each of the five points that we did here. Okay, I took a lot of time explaining and talking about it, but you need to make sure that you're memorizing these so that if you had to draw it very quickly, that you could do it without any problems and without having to take too much time drawing the table even. You just want to know what it looks like and where those points are. All right?